Hello, I'm uh, sorry I'm not with you in person today, but uh, because of some of the uh, legislation that's beginning to move in Washington, D.C. at this late date, just prior to the 4th of July uh, recess that we're going to have, uh, I wasn't able to get home to be with you as I had planned in Washington, D.C., so my apologies uh, to Norman Henry and the west of the rest of the directors of the Idaho Water Users for not being there. Uh, but there are some important things happening, and uh, what I would have done had I been there uh, was giving you my impression of what has happened in the last uh, 160 days that I've been representing uh, the 1st Congressional District uh, in uh, Washington, D.C. It's been a, an interesting time. Uh, I've been very fortunate in many ways. I've got a great staff in Idaho and I've got a great staff in Washington, D.C. and we've been um, effective in uh, getting on some good committees. I think most of you know I'm on the uh, Transportation Committee and the Water and Resources uh, Subcommittee of the Transportation Committee and also on the uh, surface and uh, infrastructure. Uh, also, I'm on the uh, Resources uh, Committee, the Natural Resources Committee, and, and serve on a couple of important uh, committees there, the water and also energy and minerals. Uh, finally, I'm on the uh, Government uh, Reform Committee, and uh, there's where uh, I'm having the most fun, uh, not only because it's the oversight committees for the EPA and the Army Corps of Engineers, and many of the, the rest of those regulatory agencies that are causing us so many problems out in the West. Uh, but I also got to be uh, vice chairman of the subcommittee that oversees those agencies. And so uh, I hope to uh, put a little more emphasis uh, in the government reform uh, of that title of that committee. Uh, but we are uh, addressing some very important issues in Washington, D.C. that are obviously uh, going to be important uh, to your meeting and the success of your meeting, and not only that, the conclusion of your meeting, which will say, where do we go from here? There's lots of uh, legislation that's going on to the books, uh, certainly Larry Craig's efforts, uh, Mike Simpson and my efforts uh, to streamline the process, Larry Craig's efforts to streamline the process on FERC uh, and relicensing of dams. Uh, uh, Mike uh, Simpson and uh, my uh, efforts to make sure that uh, we reestablish and reaffirm uh, the Water Sovereignty Act, uh, not only for the state of Idaho, but certainly uh, uh, for the entire uh, West. Uh, because of all of the uh, things that are going on with the energy shortage, uh, especially in the West, uh, the, the uh, sovereignty of water is being starting to be questioned. And so uh, we want to affirm that uh, that uh, our sovereignty over our water is not going to be subjected to, uh, by an energy crisis uh, to ev eventually a federal government standard. Uh, but let's get deal with some uh, specific issues. Uh, the first issue, and that would be probably the energy crisis. Uh, certainly uh, an energy crisis that was brought on part naturally and part by man. The natural part of it is the drought that we've got and the fact that we had uh, less than 60% in many areas of the normal water storage that we have. Uh, is resulting in uh, low water flows and causing some problems through the ESA, uh, through the Endangered Species Act, uh, and through the salmon recovery opportunities that we have. Um, and then uh, with the California crisis, uh, that was not of our doing. Uh, California, in an effort to what they thought was deregulation, which wasn't even close uh, to uh, deregulation, uh, they tried to restructure in, a, in such a way as to turn the wholesalers loose, allow for no more production, turn the wholesalers loose, and then cap the price at the end. They expected from that to get conservation. They expected from that to have an ample power supply. Well, folks, uh, you should know, uh, as, as I know, uh, and as California is beginning to find out, that if you don't let the price uh, uh, be suggested by the marketplace, there's no motivation to conserve. And so the result has been that there's not been the conservation, which is the, really the only short-term um, effort that we can make to overcome our power shortage uh, problem. Uh, in the long term, uh, California was not allowing for any um, new production to come on stream. So the result was is there was no new facilities. In fact, they hadn't streamlined their permitting process and hadn't streamlined uh, their licensing process. And the problem from that was that many plants were shut down because they no longer complied with some of the standards that had been set. And so they actually had, while they were going through uh, some blackouts and some brownouts, uh, they had some 14,000 megawatts of electricity shut down. Uh, and even though their peak loads uh, didn't hit near the demand of their total capacity, 
because they had so much shut down uh, for uh, licensing standards and for pollution standards. And in some cases uh, with Diablo Canyon, for instance, or Seiko Canyon, uh, and nuclear power was shut down because in popular opinion 59% of the people voted that they didn't want to have a nuclear power plant in their backyard. So they shut down 1300 uh, megawatts of electricity and said, well, you know, what, uh, we'll, we'll get it from Idaho and we'll get it from Oregon and we'll get it from Washington. We'll get it out of the Snake and uh, Columbia River Basin. And so that's exactly what they did. And uh, as you well know, it has caused us problems uh, in the Pacific Northwest. It's caused us problems uh, in, on our farms and our small businesses. It's caused us problems with our fish mitigation and restoration uh, projects. And uh, uh, we're working very hard to overcome those uh, problems. Some of the other issues that uh, I'm sure that you'll want to deal with uh, and talk a little bit about uh, during your conference is where do we go from here? Uh, what can we expect? Can we expect uh, for, because of this energy crisis, for uh, the four lower snake dams to no longer be a consideration for being torn out. No, you can't, uh, because as bad as it is, uh, there are still those folks in the Pacific Northwest, some in Oregon, who are represented right here in Congress, uh, that are saying we still need to take out the dams in order to save the fish, that we still need to uh, mitigate uh, the fish loss, even though this year we had the largest return, over 400,000 uh, came across uh, the, the uh, Columbia dams, and over 170,000 across uh, our last dam. And so we know that with those dams in place, we can still have massive uh, fish returns uh, into Idaho. And so that shouldn't, uh, that shouldn't if, if that hasn't told these folks that it's time to quit considerations of taking out the dams and quit considerations of such radical procedures in order to provide for the fish recovery, uh, well, then they simply are not uh, looking at the common sense side of it. And common sense is not something that's uh, well-founded in Washington, D.C. Uh, I have to tell you that uh, uh, because of my success in getting on uh, the committees that I'm really enjoying and being able to deal with the agencies that I had to stand and watch as the lieutenant governor of Idaho come in and uh, send their agents to harass and, and uh, eat out the substance of the producers in Idaho, uh, that it's a little different story dealing with them on a one-to-one -one basis back here when they're sitting in front of a hearing and setting in a front of a committee whose purpose it is to review their actions and see if their actions actually fit with the congressional intent of the legislation that was passed in the first place. And we've got some great success stories to tell. Um, the, the EPA with the arsenic rule, uh, the EPA with the Talent Irrigation uh, uh, District uh, that came out of the Ninth Circuit, the Talent Irrigation uh, decision that came out of the Ninth District Court. Uh, the EPA has suggested in both cases that they're going to use common sense here, that the arsenic rule, which was going to drop from 50 down to 10 parts per billion, and that was going to be the new standard, uh, they've set that standard aside for real peer review and true science to deal with it instead of some bureaucrats' uh, imaginary uh, ideas of uh, what things should be. Uh, I did uh, discuss with uh, Christy Whitman with Administrator Whitman uh, during her appearance before uh, the Government Reform Committee, exactly what her intent was with the talent, they, with the talent uh, irrigation district. And I think most of you know that that was where the Ninth District Court ruled that they couldn't use an aquatic side in order to clean the ditches uh, and uh, to remove the uh, foliage from the ditch, uh, ditches, invasive weeds, noxious weeds, and also anything that would slow down and, and cause percolation of the water into the into the canal system. And uh, she indicated to me that there was not their intent to pursue that, but it was their intent uh, to make sure that there was a sufficient licensure and permitting uh, done with the herbicides that were going to be, and aquaticides that were going to be needed uh, in order to um, allow those ditches to be clean. So I hope uh, this is good news for you all because uh, some of the things that I'm hearing in Washington, D.C., not only from the EPA and the Army Corps of Engineers and NIMPS, uh, US, uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, uh, the Bureau of Reclamation, and many others, is that truly there is some common sense, uh, at least during the early days of the Bush administration, starting to show up in some of these agencies. And they really want to hear from those of us in Congress that have, these, have had these ongoing concerns and are relating these concerns from our constituencies in the West, in the South, and even here in the East. And so 
Uh, I know from time to time uh, you have been called on in the past uh, by your representatives, by uh, uh, those who served in this office before myself and uh, my other colleagues, not only in Idaho but in the Pacific Northwest, uh, called on uh, you as water users and uh, farmers and small business folks uh, to come back to Washington, D.C. and spend a little time uh, talking to the administrators, uh, administrators and the agencies uh, that have uh, that have, we feel, have gone overboard. This is really our opportunity. When we call these hearings and when we ask for uh, these administrators and these agencies and these bureaucrats to come before us, we give them an opportunity to tell their story. But in that same room, we need you folks. We need you to come and sit down and to tell your story. Tell Idaho's story. Tell the water story. Uh, and what exactly the agency, in its efforts to help us, is actually doing to us in the, way, in the harm that it's doing in many cases, not only to us uh, on a daily basis, but in our traditions and in our homes, in our farms and in our jobs. And uh, I know that uh, I'm going to take the opportunity to call on the Idaho Water users and the membership therein uh, to come back to Washington, D.C. from time to time. And I hope that you will take the time and you will make the effort uh, to put together some testimony and come back and set before these committees and tell your story. Because it really does work. Uh, I, I think most of you know that I've had my run-ins on a personal basis uh, with the EPA and the Army Corps of Engineers over a half acre of swamp out on my place that I took a bunch of old rusty cars out of. And uh, I've told that story back here many times. I cannot tell you how many of my colleagues have come up to me and said, Butch, I just, I just find that really hard to believe. Cause and colleagues that have been here for years, folks. And they say, I find that really hard to believe because that isn't what we intended when we passed that legislation, the clean water legislation. That is, we did not intend uh, for the bureaucracies to go right on to farms and ranches and private property and uh, to tell folks uh, how to run their property and to tell folks uh, uh, how to use their assets. And so uh, to the extent, uh, I say again, to the extent that you can come back with your industry stories, your personal stories, and testify before these committees, uh, you will find, I think, uh, at least in the Bush administration, the early days of the Bush administ administration, has shown that you will find a willing listener. And not only that, I think that those that listen very willing have shown us thus far that they're willing to react to that. They're ready to streamline the permitting process, and they're ready to relieve some of the heavy-handed restrictions that we've had uh, on the West uh, on you folks in the Water Users Association, on the homes, on the businesses, on the farms, the ranches, and uh, the natural resource industries. So I hope that's uh, with, uh, with everything else that I've said about uh, the problems that we've got with energy and some of the uh, scarce uh, other commodities that we've got today, I hope that uh, I've given you a glimmer of hope to say, look, uh, when we're called upon, we will respond. Uh, whether it's uh, Senator Craig or Crapo or Simpson or Otter, we will respond because it gives us an opportunity to tell our story and uh, really react uh, to these agencies uh, in a favorable way and with some common sense. So uh, with that, uh, I wish you very well in your meeting, uh, in your organization, and I look forward to, to seeing you back here in Washington, D.C. from time to time, testifying before these very bureaucrats and these very agencies uh, that have come out uh, to Idaho and uh, sought to uh, interfere with uh, your ability to run your own affairs. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the time that you've given me this morning. I hope to see you uh, at your next meeting. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the time that you've given me this morning. I hope to see you uh, at your...
than myself. Right. And uh, now you're focused on the stains on yourself, correct? No. So it's fair to state at the beginning of this process, sir, one or both of your shoes are behind you. Is that correct? That's correct. What
Hallo.